One of the things I like to um, do in the lecture component of this is talk about technology, and um, I think this is a technology course. And there's the idea of future technology that I, I like to discuss, but also uh, current technology and how it um, affects decisions that we're making and um, the way that we're perceiving um, the activities that we're doing. So with that, um, uh, always the question comes up, what kind of computer hardware do I need? Students are coming in at the computer viz level, um, uh, maybe with um, computers that were, they already had and are trying to make purchasing decisions. And I get asked a lot of questions about that. And many times I don't really have good answers because the questions um, depend and depend on so many things. So financial um, uh, means that you might have, um, where you're going to go with the program, what your expectations are. And so I thought one of the things after a discussion with another student, um, uh, many of us have really good ideas about what we think are good choices for computer hardware. And I asked, in this case, Cameron to share that. And he did, and I thought what he wrote up was a very useful, and I would like to see maybe 10 or 15 of these from other students. Um, it doesn't all have to happen this year, but if you feel inclined, if you're transferring from a two-year program and you have some ideas about um, making purchases of computers and you'd like to share it, um, I'd like to put these together in kind of like a, a blog where people could read them and share them. I think it would be really helpful to a lot of people. And on that idea of the kind of this digital literacy, um, uh, this the conversation comes up all the time, this idea of a CPU and a GPU. I'm not sure that everyone completely understands that, so I might want to just take a minute here to kind of like discuss that. A CPU is a central processing unit, and a GPU is a graphics processing unit. And graphics can, is actually expanding into many other kinds of processing, like the video, um, but even into things like artificial intelligence and... Um, certain kinds of manipulation of complex calculations for uh, image recognition and all of that. So, um, but uh, maybe I, I diverge too far to the GPU. But the CPU is really managing all of the, most of the activities that happen in your normal computing activities of, of watch, looking at web pages, uh, making drawings, all that kind of activities. Um, and, um, also importantly is the idea of how much memory your computer has. A lot of students say, I need more memory because my computer isn't doing something fast. And it's important to realize that the CPU has memory and also the GPU has memory that it access. So these little, these two little end strips are what are called SIM cards. But the idea is that these are buses of memory. So there is memory that is just dedicated to graphic functions and there's memory that's dedicated to the CPU function. And understanding where putting your memory will give you the most amount of performance is something for, I guess, you to discover in future purchasing decisions. Um, and so off of that, all of these are um, connected by what's called a bus, um, a memory bus. It's just a lane, a highway, a multi-tracked highway to move data between the memory and the CPU or between the CPU and the GPU or in the case of CPU and maybe your hard drive and or um, other items like the Wi-Fi connection to the internet. All of these share these buses to communicate back to the CPU. Now, the, the idea is what's the difference between the CPU and the GPU and how does that affect me? And so um, NVIDIA, who makes graphic uh, GPU cards, and one of the largest manufacturers, uh, put together this little video, and I'll show it to you in a minute. They also created this graphic showing you the difference between a CPU and a GPU. They both have memory. They both have cache, ca caches, uh, places to store data. Um, and they also have controls and um, um, uh, memory memory places um, within them. But the, the structural difference is quite radical when you look at the left and the right here. Um, the CPU can handle um, many complex functions, very varying complex functions, but it handles it very slowly. A GPU only can handle very limited types of functions, but it can handle it very rapidly. Um, for instance, creating the, the video output that you see on your screen. Um, uh, always calculations of something simple as a polygon in order to render it, having a color and or light showing on it, and doing it over and over very rapidly. And so this, this video, and I'll click on this now, shows you the difference between a, um, a, a CPU and a GPU. And let me click on to YouTube here, so we'll go to a full All right, screen. I introduce to you Leonardo, and he is going to paint a picture 
For you guys, so here we have something in the way that a CPU a might do as a series like a of discrete actions performed sequentially, one after the other. In three, two, and one. And we're going to use it to generate this idea of using this thing to uh, paint. Let me speed it up. So it's delivering these paintballs to a screen one at a time. He turns the speed up in order to make it run faster. Ladies and gentlemen. And then, so that's Leonardo. a CPU, and this is actually then the, the visualization hey, of what would be a when GPU. When we hit this trigger on this thing, 2,100 gallons of air goes so in this through case, these it's accumulators, doing one simple out these thing, valves, into all 1,100 of these tubes, into these tubes, with, in these which tube the bottom of the is a paintball. Are in order Each to of those paintballs will fly across paint. seven feet of space and in 80 milliseconds reach its target. Hopefully, when it's all said and done, it's going to paint the Mona Lisa. <laughs> GPU painting demonstration. Yep. And 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> so the idea is that that's how rapidly Ladies and gentlemen, a GPU can help deliver the video graphics over. performance that you want compared to a CPU which has a dedicated function. <laughs> now, it really doesn't tell the whole story, um, and a lot of that is a little bit of marketing. Let me try and close this down again and go back to our presentation. Because surprisingly... Build custom um, industrial machines in days. I need to cut out that YouTube, sorry. Our video card for Revit does very little work. Um, when working with Revit mo models, the video card is solely used to display the model on the screen. While a more powerful video card may allow the model to be drawn at a higher frame per second, um, the video requirements for Revit are relatively low. And they go on to talk about some cards. But... Um, I went to Revit's website and uh, looked at what kind of um, hardware requirements uh, were needed for that. And, um, you know, the, um, uh, they're really quite light. Uh, DirectX capable graphics card with a shader Model 5, these are all really quite basic. And it's not until we look at um, software like Enscape or Lumion, which are plugins for high quality rendering create the more realistic kind of scenery um, that we actually need these dedicated GPUs. As a matter of fact, Revit will run on something without the dedicated graphic cards, but it will not, um, but Enscape and Lumion are not capable of doing that. And that's one of the reasons why I pushed the idea that you can still do really high quality renderings, albeit slow, um, inside of Revit. So, um, just a little bit of an introduction about that idea of these graphics cards. Um, here's one actually being inserted, and they're really quite complex. They're almost, they are basically computers in and of themselves. They're filled with memory and um, all kinds of uh, processing capabilities. And I'll pick up, so that's the, the world of technology we live in today. And next I'll talk a little bit about the technology of tomorrow again.